Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 28th of February. Security patrol streets of Indian capital days after deadly violence. Pakistan shut schools, suspends Iran flights to curb coronavirus spread. And Buddhists in Nepal celebrate almsgiving Samyak Mahadan festival. And now for all the details. Heavy security continued to be deployed in the Indian capital New Delhi on Friday as normalcy seemed to be gradually returning days after violence over the new citizenship law. The death toll due to the violence climbed to at least 42 on Friday. Armed police continued to patrol the streets in Indian capital on Friday as normalcy seemed to be returning days after violence over the new Citizenship Amendment Act in New Delhi killed over 40 people. The violence in northeast part of the city erupted on Monday between thousands demonstrating for and against the new citizenship law that eases part for persecuted non-Muslim communities from three neighboring countries to gain Indian citizenship. Meanwhile. Senior Delhi police officials have also been leading flag marches to urge people to resume normal life, assuring them of complete security. And through announcements, it reaches maximum number of people. Those who are inside houses also, they are able to understand. So this is a confidence building measure only. Amid a trail of destruction, the Delhi Sikh Gurdwara Management Committee and Autonomous Management Body of Sikh Shrines in National Capital also provided langar or free food to the people in violence hit areas. People also gathered at mosques in violence affected areas to perform Friday prayers. The Indian capital has been the epicenter of unrest against the new citizenship law which critics blame undermines India's secular fabric for excluding Muslims. The government has, however, denied any bias. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said that President Donald Trump's just-concluded India trip demonstrated the value Washington placed on its ties with New Delhi. U.S. President Trump was on a two-day maiden visit to India on February 24 and 25, accompanied by First Lady, his daughter and son-in-law. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Thursday said, President Donald Trump's visit to India highlighted the value of the relationship shared between the two countries. Pompeo retweeted the White House's post on Wednesday about the trip to India and said, Democratic traditions unite us. Shared interests bond us and under the president's leadership, our partnership has and will only grow stronger. President Trump, during the two-day trip on February 24 and 25, visited the three Indian cities, Ahmedabad, Agra and New Delhi. Acting Secretary of State for South and Central Asia, Alice G. Wells, in a series of tweets, hailed Trump's visit and said, Excellent progress had been made in relation to the partnership between the two nations. Wells also announced, that United States congressional representatives and parliamentarians will hold an exchange visit for the first time in April. During the visit, Trump and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held bilateral talks and post-meeting, U.S. concluded over $3 billion in defense sales to provide America's finest military helicopters to the Indian Armed Forces. Pakistan on Thursday shut schools in several areas and suspended flights to and from Iran to try to stop the spread of coronavirus. The South Asian nation bordering China and Iran, both of which have been hit hard by the virus, reported its first two cases on Wednesday. Pakistan on Thursday shut schools in several areas and suspended flights to and from Iran to try to stop spread of coronavirus 
a day after reporting its first two cases of the infection. Authorities shut schools in Sindh, Karachi city, where the first case was reported, and southwestern Balochistan province, which borders Iran. The South Asian nation bordering China and Iran, both of which have been hit hard by the virus, reported its first two cases on Wednesday. Pakistan's health minister Zafar Mirza in a tweet on Thursday night said that both the patients are stable and improving and contacts traced until now have tested negative. हमारे पड़ोसी मुमालिक में भी कुछ ऐसे शवाएं मिले हैं कोरोना वायरस के तो उस चीज को मदे नजर रखते हुए हमारी हुकूमत ने फैसला किया है और हमने फैसला किया है कि उस वक्त तक जब तक कोई पोजीशन वादा ना हो जाए 15 मार्च तक हमारे सारे ये تعلیمی ادارے بند رہیں گے रोड एंड रेल लिंक्स विद ईरान वेदर द कोरोना वायरस एपिडेमिक हैज क्लेम 26 लाइव्स हैड ऑलरेडी बीन स्नैप्ड अर्लियर दिस वीक ड्यू टू द स्केयर ऑफ इंफेक्शन U.S. lawmakers have sought transparency on a peace deal with the Afghan Taliban to be signed on February 29. The lawmakers sought assurances that the deal would be public and will not contain any secret annexes or side deals. U.S. Congress members have raised concerns if there are any side deals or secret annexes in the planned U.S. Taliban deal in Afghanistan to be signed on February 29. In a hearing of the House Armed Services Committee, lawmakers raised concerns with U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper and General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and said that the insurgent group has a history of extracting concessions in exchange for false assurances. In an open letter, around 22 lawmakers demanded there should be no commitment of a full U.S. withdrawal, no secret annexes. or side deals and no intelligence sharing both esper and mili reiterated that the deal is entirely conditions based i think the whole thing is dependent upon conditions and and depending upon taliban behavior uh, and if the taliban do not uh, agree to continued reduction in violence and so on uh, then i think we're in a different place but right now things are looking good as of today so we're going to see it's going to it's conditions based we're going to take it step by step week by week The US is set to sign the historic peace deal with the Taliban on February 29, provided that the week-long reduction in violence across the war-torn Afghanistan concludes successfully. The agreement struck after several rounds of US Taliban talks is expected to lead to foreign so, troops withdrawal. Also It also proposes the, talks between the government in Kabul and the Taliban, which has so far refused to speak to the western-backed we government, so hard, calling it a puppet regime. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli for the first time addressed former Communication Minister Gokul Baskota's resignation issue since his oust from the government following corruption allegations. Oli said that there is no concrete evidence that can be held against Baskota. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Thursday came to Gokul Baskota's defense days after his trusted cabinet colleague was forced to resign over corruption allegations speaking at a Nepal Communist Party program held in the capital Kathmandu on Thursday Oli said accusations against Baskota have not been established Baskota who headed two ministries Ministry of Communication and Ministry of Urban Development has been accused of bargaining for a kickback of 740 million Nepali rupees from a Swiss company for a contract to procure a security printing press for the government only government has come under sustained flak after the bribe case got exposed nepal's opposition parties have demanded a parliamentary probe into the matter devotees in nepal's lalitpur city gathered in a large open ground this week to celebrate samyak mahadan a buddhist alms giving festival Hundreds of idols of Buddha are assembled for worship and devotees from all walks of life give away different types of gifts including food to the deities on the occasion. Hundreds of devotees gathered on a large open ground in Nepal's Lalitpur city to celebrate this week Samyak Mahadan, a 1000 year old Buddhist alms giving festival. 
The festival brings together a wide cross section of the Newar community, including monks and artists. Hundreds of idols of Buddha are assembled for worship, and devotees from all walks of life give away different types of gifts, including money and food to the deities and their keepers. The main focus of the festival is to honor the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, particularly the Pankara Buddha, who in a previous life is believed to have predicted the enlightenment of Shakyamuni Buddha. During the celebrations, the city reverberates with the chants of monks and Buddhist religious performances. Lalipur Pari, ko Bihar Haro Bata, ani Kathmandu ko Bihar Bata, Bhaktapur ko Bihar Bata, hai na, ani Kirtipur Chobar, Bungamati, thau thau ko Bihar Haro, sab Bihar Haro lajen amantran gare ra chaini ekatir pare ra dhan garne chaini bhay ko unale chaini yella chaini mahadhan bane ko ho hai na, dhan chitta bhriti garne ra tyo anusar ko dhan garne bhay ko le ya Bihar Haro ma garne bhay ko le samay ko mahadhan bane chaini ya dhan garne unna bhay ko ho. The annual festival of Samyak Mahadan is marked every year at Bhaktapur, once in half a decade at Lalitpur and once in 12 years in capital Kathmandu, where a total of 126 Buddhas are brought into a single place. The Samyak Mahadan festival was organized by Hiranya Varna Mahavihar. The first health clinic exclusively for the transgender community was inaugurated in India's West Bengal province on Thursday. The clinic will be in operation twice a month, aimed at providing basic health care to the community. A hospital in eastern Kolkata city on Thursday opened India's first clinic for the transgenders in an initiative to meet the medical requirements of the community that often faces harassment while seeking medical care. The clinic Antar is a joint project of US Consulate and Peerless Hospital. It has all modern facilities and will be functional twice at a month for basic free medical consultation and screening. Ranjita Sinha, a transgender who approached the hospital to come up with the clinic for her community, expressed hope that West Bengal province government should also come up with such clinics. ये आज का दिन हमारे लिए बहुत तात्पर्य था जो पीएलएस हॉस्पिटल ने ये इनिशिएटिव लिया और ये इनिशिएटिव मुझे आगे चलकर लगता है हमारे जैसे इंसानों के लिए बहुत फायदा मिल रहेगा। According to 2011 census, India has about two million transgender people. Although India's Supreme Court officially recognized trans people as a third gender with equal rights under the law in 2014, they are often shunned by the society. Initially. The clinics will have general physicians, though the hospital has plans to invite endocrinologists to be part of the project. Wildlife authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir have launched an anti-poaching boat for the first time for the safety of thousands of migratory birds which nestle in the iconic Dal Lake. Wildlife authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir launched the first anti-poaching boat for the safety of migratory birds in the iconic Dal Lake in Srinagar city this week. Thousands of migratory birds flock from Siberia, China and parts of Central Asia and nestle in wetlands in the picturesque Kashmir Valley from September onwards and stay till April. A wildlife official said the special motorboat with modern equipments will help monitor the activities of the birds in a dull lake and to make their stay comfortable and safe. Dull, because it is a very important wetland here, and here you will have seen that in this season there are thousands of birds in this season. So, for their safety, the department has made some special steps for the department to take some special provisions or special steps. And in those steps, there was also one thing that we have such a facility in the dull, where we can go to the dull interior, within no time, we can reach the dull interior, if we have any time to reach the dull interior, if we have any time to reach the dull interior. Some of the popular migratory birds visiting the region include Shovela, Pochards, Teal, Pintail and Grey Lake Goose. The Wildlife Department is now making efforts to launch more high-tech anti-poaching boats in other wetlands in the Kashmir Valley. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.